Mark Vinzagara, Vinzagara Custom Shop Guitars. What's going on this morning? Well, this COVID thing has been uh, put everything behind. Things are still crazy as far as getting orders in and and workability. The town, our town, is back now working, and uh, you know everything is going going along here. Um, I've got to order some hip shot um, for the bass that I'm fixing to talk about. And they're in New York, so they're just now like opening restaurants and stuff. So it's just really weird. But um, anyway, to say all that, COVID has been a pain in the butt and it's really slowed everything down. My shop has been dragging. Um, Ryan, this is going out to you. This base build is for Ryan. And Ryan's been awesome to work with. He's a very patient guy. And uh, this build has been going on way too long. And again, my apologies for that. But it is special. It is a special base. So let me show you. And we have, this is a birthing. So it has strings on it. Um, so it's still in the white. There's no finish on it. Um, I always do this, put them together uh, prior to... Um, prior to finishing to um, check plane ge geometry and all of that action. Let me show you the headstock. I do have one chrome tuner on there. Um, I don't know why I was short one. It's actually chrome and black. I like to do the, the pair <laughs> sometimes. And I actually have another base that's got the uh, chrome and black in another drawer. So. Um, obviously, that's still got to get the logo and, and all that. The, the head plate gets a finish. The neck will not. This is the last piece of Kerbo Rockwood. And yes, you did hear me right. This is actually from Greg Kerbo's shop. Not the neck. The blank that I made the neck from. Um, and I have, even though this was a CNC'd neck, I have hand carved to get this sucker just perfect. You still see my um, my guide marks on everything. Um, from the first fret, I leave a little bit of a flare going back to the volute, because I want that to always be the strongest part of the neck. Um, but anyway, that is that. There's Ryan's initials and the mother of pearl. But and I still, the transition, I think you guys saw a video of me doing the transition on this one. Um, I never can finish that in until I do this step. So the next thing will be um, to make sure, because the neck geometry still might change just a hair. I might uh, lay it back just, just a quarter of a degree. It won't be much um, because I like the saddle sitting low but right now they're bottomed out and the middle strings, they're actually too low. Oh, well, that's because of the nut right there. It hasn't had any fret work at all done to it yet. And it plays like a dream, which is awesome. That's basically what I strive for. Um, so very little um, leveling of the frets. I don't want to take a bunch out. I use that pyramid wire. Um, if you can see the shape, of course, it's not going to focus in. I'm going to get my fingers in there and focus on it. Maybe you can see that middle one in between my fingers. It's focusing on my face, man. Come on. So you really won't be able to see it, but it's shaped like a pyramid. And the reason why I like that is it's got a wide footprint. It's 100, 105 wide, I believe, and it's 55 tall. But if you look at a normal fret, they're just a big, you know, hump. And then when you, oh, that's a good illustration. When you level them, you end up with that big flat and you still got these two big, you got a school bus. And boy, there's nothing worse to me than a school bus round fret. So to do that, you got to lose weight in the, in the hips here 
to not have a point like I have in my fingers, but you want you want an intonation land, as Dan Earlywine calls it, or the flat on the top of the fret needs to be extremely narrow, pencil thin, and it can't be flat, obviously. It's got to be rounded. So if you have this big, broad, wide fret, it makes that really hard. You end up with a school bus, and the school bus tops, you get fret buzz just from the fret itself. Action can be high, and it'll still buzz on its own fret, if that makes sense. That's a kind of a hard one to chase. This thing sounds great. Every note. Hasn't had a chance for me to screw it up. You know, human hands kind of <laughs> get in there and kind of mess things up. Um, but we're not going to mess it up because we know better. But anyway, I said all that to say that the thing is playing crazy amazing. The older I get, um, incidentally, for all y'all uh, kitties out there that don't know, let's see, June 28th is coming. Um, I don't even know what today is. Uh, it's Memorial Day weekend, so I mean, we're, we're only about uh, 30 days from me turning 55, which is kind of a milestone, right? That I'm officially old in 28 days. <laughs> for all you 54-year-olds, come on, man, relish the fact. Anyway, with all that being said, I've had a lot of practice, <laughs> you know, doing this kind of stuff, and the older I get, I don't know, maybe the lazier I get. I don't know if that's what it is or not, but I don't think so. The prep gets way more important. The seating of the frets before gluing the frets in, and yes, I glue them. Um, if you don't, uh, of course, Ryan, I'm not talking to you directly, but for the general audience purpose, I'm, there's probably somebody out there percolating saying, oh, glue it in frets. Yeah, whatever. Um, Yes, I glue my frets in, and that's the best way, and I can prove it. Let's prove it, shall we? So this is my X-Acto knife that I absolutely love. It has a, an aluminum core, and this knife has tapped. This ta may have tapped your frets, whoever you are. So the big telltale is tapping on the fret. So I tap the fret ends. Of every fret, tap all the way across, and you'd be surprised how many instruments come in here, and you tap across them, and you'll get a dead, let me tap on the fingerboard. I mean, there's that big of a difference between a, a fret that doesn't, that doesn't seat. <laughs> Not that much, but it might as well be. I mean, that's the difference I hear. Um, but glued in frets will always sound like that. Um, but before they're glued in, you got to make sure that they are seated 100%. And, um, and what I do, I go a step further now. So the, this has kind of been an evolution thing is, you know, you rock the frets. Let me just demonstrate, shall we? You rock the frets three frets at a time with, uh, a tool like this from Stumac. Um, yes, I bought this, so it's not a freebie. Um, but anyway, you, you use these to where you cross three frets and you try to get a rock, right? Right, right there's a little one right there. It's a little baby, baby rock. There's no fret work been done to this yet. Um, but I rock the entire fingerboard prior to gluing in. And I do an additional hammer fret job. This is after I've put the frets in. I go across everything and go ahead and tap and make sure, and triple make sure that everything is seated flush to the board. And then go back with the hammer, rock the fingerboard in every position all the way across every three frets like that, and then reseat it. And consequently, I end up with a couple little spots that I have to address as far as leveling, um, which is jam up in my opinion, because it saves a ton of work. And again, taking meat off the top of the frets is something you really should aspire to not to. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm saying all that. I really wanted to show off the base. This is the Elite Series 
Um, Elite is the package, the construction style, and it's the BAJ model, which um, I collaborated with Brent Anthony Johnson. This is his signature model, um, which I am so glad that he shared his vision, uh, which is his upper, upper coupling. It's got this extra upper coupling on the low side of the neck. And man, it makes a huge difference. It sounds like a single cut, which are just growing on me, by the way. I mean, I have have always had this thing to where they really didn't, you know, I don't know. But you can see it's a, a hippie sandwich. The um, That's what I like to call it, a hippie sandwich. So the uh, maple top, obviously both sides of the wings match there. And they match on the back. Um, it has walnut stringers and an alder core. And then it has a separate piece of maple in the center. Oh, and I need to do the battery uh, battery route. I forgot all about it. It is active. So, um, so all these are, like I said, walnut stringers. The back is kind of interesting. This is where I turned off the phone last time and lost the video because it didn't restart. Um, this is where the wing gay wing then there's a black lamb, then a walnut, then a black lamb. That is all kind of cool there. Um, anyway, um, ultra lamb neck has got brass inserts, stainless steel screws, so the coupling is like phenomenal. It sounds awesome. But anyway, um, that is what we're working with. Let me flip this back around. And thank you guys for hanging with me and watching this. And um, Blake Hall's in town. He was hanging. So it's kind of interesting because when they're first strung up, you know, when they're birthed, I mean, they spend, uh, you know, six to eight months not knowing th that they're not a tree, right? So you're getting all the body glued up and they're like, oh, what the heck? And they're trying to get along with everything that you're doing and moving and doing what they're going to do. And then finally, all the parts come together and strings get put on it and tension gets put on it. And now wood and wire meet w at the technology threshold and um, become an instrument. So yesterday was that birthing day and... Um, I had four different people in the shop that all got to experience that, which, um, you know, they, they saw something different in me because it, to me, it is, it's kind of, a, I don't want to say it's a spiritual experience, but it, everything in my life is a spiritual experience. So it is. And it, it's when you first meet that instrument for me, it's kind of like the first day that Ryan meets the instrument. You know, he's gonna get to know it in a um, in a new way and I'm getting to know it in a new way because again, I've been carving on this piece of wood for a while and now I get to hear, I get to hear, I've already heard it in my head, right? So I've envisioned what the woods are going to do, what the, everything is going to do, how it's going to sound. And now it all comes together. And then I, my imagination and reality meet. And how far parallel are they is the cool part. Because obviously it's never the same. It's always cooler than my imagination, right? I don't know, am I shooting low? I don't know, but um, as far as playability goes, this one is f far and above any instrument that I've put together in the white at this stage, period. The, the, only, the only thing is if that little half degree taper, I mean half degree, maybe less, maybe quarter, 0.25 maybe, whatever, had that, been there all the stars would have aligned and i probably would have had a cheshire cat grin so big yesterday i wouldn't have been able to talk to anybody <laughs> because it would have just been you know the perfect scenario but again it's so perfect i i love what i do so hey this is an awesome awesome experience but um this thing plays amazing before fret work and i'm like oh my gosh that's 
that's crazy. It's going to take very little, um, very little leveling. The only thing I'm going to do is make sure that I, that there's obviously nothing high. There's like I showed the one rock I think on there. Um, get those little things out and then polish those suckers up, polish those crowns to where they're like a piece of glass. And she's going to play amazing, which is awesome. Anyway, I said Blake Hall was here yesterday. He's in town. He did a show last night. I think he's got three shows. He's only going to be here till uh, midweek or something. So we're going to try to get him back in. We'll do a video. Um, I've got his guitar. has actually celebrated more birthdays than this one here which is bad, but we've delivered him. His blue guitar was a, was a happy little accident that happened in between. So we've kind of shelved his other guitar, but he's now reinvigorated because he wants to get that one done and start on the next one because now he's on a single coil thing he wants to, to get done. So we'll, we'll kind of talk through some of that, hopefully, um, maybe interview style. I don't know, maybe just, yeah, probably just coffee style. We'll just, have some coffee and sit down and yap maybe even live Ooh, that'd be weird i'm not a live stream kind of guy i'm an edit kind of guy because i say stupid crap all the time and i like to edit it out some of it's funny but some of it you know i don't have a bunch of pc in me um y'all are lucky i don't cuss at all but i almost said a lot i don't cuss but you know if i did then uh <clears throat> y'all know that the pc wouldn't be up in there at all I'd be messing up all the time. But anyway, I'm going to let y'all go because now I'm just yapping. I'm talking to myself. I'm looking at myself like it's another person, like Blake's here now and we're going to talk. But anyway, peace out, y'all. Thanks for hanging with me. I appreciate the time and we'll talk at you soon.